My name is Kate Watson-Smythe. I run the blog Mad About the House, and I'm here with EKBB and KBB Arc. I think if you've got a small space and you want to make a statement with pattern, you've got to go all out for it. Don't just stick to a small bit. Uh, so use the whole wall, maybe the ceiling if the pattern goes in that direction. I think if you want to use a strong pattern in a large room, you've perhaps got more choices as to whether you just use it in smaller accents or whether you do the whole thing. It might be a little bit overwhelming if you do the whole room in it, if it's a really big pattern. So you've got to sort of judge the size of the room and really take into account the scale of the pattern as well. Because if it's a small pattern, it might be easier to use large. Although obviously a large pattern will look incredible in a large expanse. I don't think there are ever any no's when it comes to pattern. I actually quite often like using it in unexpected places. So for example, in kitchens, which are often full of hard surfaces and straight lines, I think it's fantastic to bring some really strong pattern in there. And that might be in quite a small way, so just on a splashback behind the sink or on the floor. You can lay it on the floor in tiles, maybe lay it in a rug shape and then have plain tiles around it to kind of bring it down. Layering patterns can be hard, so you need to make sure that you perhaps keep the colours very, very tonal, so that although they're different colours, they are mixing, the colours aren't fighting each other. And often a way to do that is to look at a paint chart, because they will arrange their paint charts in colours that work together tonally. So look at that for inspiration, maybe slightly copy it in terms of your own colour layering or pattern layering. Flowers, big floral patterns always look great with black and white stripes and then a plain colour. So you can mix them all up, but you need to sort of try it out first. I'm not a fan of the accent wall. Um, I think it feels sometimes like you weren't brave enough to use the colour on all the walls or you couldn't afford the wallpaper for all the walls. So if you've got a wall that's architecturally different, if it perhaps has a feature on it, maybe you don't need to add another feature on it because it's got a fireplace on it already. Um, but perhaps if you have alcoves either side of the fireplace, you could use a colour down the back of the shelves or wallpaper down the back of the shelves. But I would say rather than picking out one whole wall in a colour, you could do all four walls, maybe halfway up so that you still get that strength of colour going all the way around. But it's not just on one wall. It's when it's a feature wall has a tendency to be a bit random. So that's just the wall behind the sofa. Why have you done that? The exception to that would be in the bedroom. I think you can paint the wall behind the bed in a different colour because that can make the bed head seem grander and bigger. And also if you do it in a wallpaper, that might give you a focal point when you go into the room, but obviously when you're asleep, you're not looking at it. Thank you, it's been great fun talking about using colour and pattern in your home today.